Yo guys, JD here. Oh wait. Hey guys, got it out of the castle here, bringing you once again another track. So this week we're taking a look around Sakuba. Uh, it's quite a popular track in the Grand Turismo Circle. You never thought about running a, a Group Three car around here, yeah? Yeah, me neither. Anyways, on to the track guy. So coming into turn one. Your braking reference is going to be the 50 meter boards that throughout the track are on the walls or on top of the hay bales on the left hand side of the track. You're going to want to point your car towards the first Yokohama lettering on the far wall. I personally don't use this as a reference when driving, but it's a good pointer to use to try to stay consistent with your entry angle. Shifting down to second gear, staying here for a moment to keep the car stable. When trying to increase your pace, you're going to want to stay in second gear longer than I do to keep the rear end from suddenly stepping out, but I've practiced this track quite a bit this week so I'm able to balance the oversteer sufficiently to maintain good cornering speed. If you downshift too early, you'll immediately oversteer, so make sure you slow down the car enough that when you shift down, the car's revs don't shoot up much. Maintaining your cornering speed is crucial here, so practice going through slower and slowly go quicker and quicker. The apex of turn 1 is rather late, so be patient on the throttle. Getting on the power really when the car is fully turned facing the track. You can short shift up to second to get better traction, which helps in later stages of tire wear. But if you have enough stint practice, you should be able to exit in first consistently but be mindful of exit oversteer towards the end of its life. Turn two and three are simple, easily take the curbs. For turn three, you can take a bit of grass, but be careful not to cut too much as it can result in a track cut penalty if you push it a bit too much. The braking zone for turn four starts at the apex of turn three, but the grass doesn't affect your braking much, so you don't need to worry about it. You can hug the inside of the curb, missing it though as it can unsettle the car, and since most of this track is about conserving momentum, you'll lose a decent amount of time if the car becomes unstable. Again, be patient on the throttle. With this setup, if you're too early on the throttle, you will understeer. But, you'll get oversteer as well, depending on how much throttle input you give it. So, take the corner patiently, like the carousel at the Nürburgring for instance. Pay attention to the throttle input on the corner exit. It's slow and progressive as the car rotates, even with fresh tires. Now turn 5 is an interesting corner. It requires what's known as left foot braking, which involves having throttle and braking input simultaneously. What that does is force the car to have, in a sense, too much grip, stabilizing the car a lot which especially helps when tire wear is high. So pay attention to the brake and throttle input going into this corner. Turn six is a quick left corner. Depending on how you take turn five, it can be a smooth left or a quick left. But in each scenario, you wanna kiss the inside white line of the corner, opening your steering input to tap the outside curb, depending on how your line and your focus on tire wear is, and flow back to the other side of the track. Be careful with going wide here because if you catch the outside grass, it can be difficult to pull the car back and the corner is turning away from you. So it's a double whammy that's just trying to make you spin out. For turn seven, your braking reference is the 50 meter board on top of the hay bale on the left. Breaking down to first, once again, being careful to balance the oversteer. Second gear can apply here to maintain it. You want to keep a tight line and get a late apex for the quote unquote long back straight. For the final corner, I use the pit board as my braking marker, but be careful not to hit it as it's quite a sturdy marker. Try it out for yourself sometime. I brake just after it, but I've been told it's quite a late break into the corner, so be mindful of not going too deep into the corner, having to shift down from 4th to 3rd to regain speed. You want to hug the curb throughout the corner, even taking some of the curb on the exit if you do it right. 
As you'll see, I had to lift slightly to get the nose turned in a bit more to make the corner. And that's a lap of Sakuba, so let's head on to the setup.